everybody, how's it going? It's Marley, second year med student. I hope y'all are doing well, being safe, being healthy. Okay, so this is part two of cool, interesting, fun, amazing medical specialties that um, no one talks about. I just think it's crazy how we as med students get exposed to a very limited number of specialties in comparison to how many there actually are. And yet we're supposed to pick before we have barely any exposure to what's actually out there. And we have to do a lot of searching ourselves and a lot of research ourselves to figure out what might fit best. And a lot of times we may think something fits best, but we haven't actually had any exposure to it. So we're kind of going on a gut feeling like that. I don't know, that feels weird to me. So I'm like, let's explore more options here. So that's why I kind of like doing these videos. I did the part one a while back and I, that's why I'm doing this part two and maybe even more if people are interested, because I think it's really important to learn about the other options that are out there, the cool, amazing things that we can do and uh, specialize in just so that we have all of our options and we can make an informed decision. Anyway, of course, if you're watching this and you happen to have heard of one of these specialties, congratulations, you are way ahead of the curve. And please comment, tell us more about it if you have more to add to my descriptions of these specialties. Let's get going. First, we've got hospice and palliative care. So the AMA, the American Medical Association, defines hospital, hospice and palliative care as, quote, hospice and palliative medicine physicians have special knowledge and skills to prevent and relieve the suffering experienced by patients with life-limiting illnesses. They reduce the burden of life-threatening conditions by supporting the best quality of life throughout the course of an illness and by managing factors that contribute to the suffering of the patient and the patient's family. So when we think of palliative, palliative care focuses on, as it says here, on improving a patient's quality of life by managing pain and other distressing symptoms of a serious illness. Hospice, on the other hand, is comprehensive palliative care for patients in their last year of life. So obviously it makes sense that these two are, you know, very much interrelated and combined. So to be able to go and specialize in hospice and palliative care, you have to do a one year fellowship and that fellowship can be done after doing one of like more than 10 different residencies. So you, you have quite a few options for residency if you want to end up going into palliative care, which is cool. And this is so important. Like honestly, no, no one talks about this because kind of has that rep of like, oh, you're just dealing with dying people. Kind of like oncology. I feel like a lot of people probably think of oncology the same way, but from what I've read, like it's amazingly fulfilling work. I mean, yeah, it's often kind of sad and it's definitely not glamorous. You know, it's not going to be on Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> but it's incredibly important. Managing care, for people with terminal illnesses and in the last year of life, help people to, you know, pass with dignity and comfort. So I feel like this is very under the radar and shouldn't be. Moving on to the next specialty though, which is kind of a full 180 flip, completely different vibe from hospice and palliative. We have tactical medicine. I don't know why I did this. I just feel like tactical. So the American College of Emergency Physicians defines tactical medicine as Quote, tactical medicine involves the services and emergency medical support necessary to preserve the safety, physical and mental health and overall well-being of military and law enforcement, SWAT, special operations, tactical personnel and others at the scene of critical incident deployments and training. They render medical care during training and at high threat deployments where normal EMS and fire personnel cannot safely respond. That sounds intense. You have to do first an emergency medicine residency. I think that's pretty strict. And then after that, there is one option in the country for a two-year fellowship at Johns Hopkins in tactical medicine. However, if you've heard of EMS fellowship, which you can do also after emergency medicine residency, EMS fellowships often have like sub focuses or subtracts with a tactical medicine focus. So you can either go like full in on the two year fellowship at Johns Hopkins, or you can do EMS fellowship and kind of get a taste of it within the EMS fellowship. So you kind of have two different routes if you want to get involved in this. Either way, you have to have done an emergency medicine residency beforehand. I think this specialty is really interesting. Like b before I heard about this, I, I don't know, I guess it had never occurred to me that there would be an actual medical specialty focused specifically on medicine and law enforcement and deployment in military settings. Like I didn't think that there would be a specific training pathway for that. I just figured it would be like emergency physicians in the military would do kind of this job. It's this different niche side of emergency medicine geared toward a very specific population. I've, I've never heard of anyone talk about. I just had, I found this on a list of specialties and I was like, what is that? Which I think is awesome. So for those that fit the bill for this, 
this is a cool track. Let's move on to the next specialty. We've got adolescent medicine. So the definition of this is actually fairly broad. It may include adolescent primary care, mental health care, reproductive and sexual health care, disorders of puberty, eating disorders, chronic illness, chronic fatigue, chronic pain syndromes, substance abuse, school health, juvenile justice, sports medicine, and the list even goes on. But like, I think the breadth of family medicine and preventive medicine, but focus specifically on adolescents. That's a lot. That's variety. That's crazy. And it actually has a surprisingly long fellowship. It's a three year fellowship. Most fellowships are one to two years. So that's why I say it's kind of long. After having done a family medicine, internal medicine or pediatrics residency. And apparently there's a really significant shortage of adolescent specialists. And maybe the reason it's such a long fellowship is because adolescence is such a complex development period. I mean, think of all the changes that happened during that time. <laughs> You're essentially becoming an expert in the most awkward time of human life, that's quite the undertaking. It probably requires tons, just mountains of patience that I do not have, you know, dealing with teens and parents all the time. I don't know why this isn't talked about more. We talk about, you know, oh, uh, you know, pediatrics, uh, fetal medicine, so like little babies. And then we have geriatrics, so taking care of old people. Then we have, you know, all of the adult regular health specialties. So it makes sense that we would have an adolescent specific specialty. And yet this is like never talked about. I I don't even, I don't know if I've met anyone or even heard like on a podcast of an adolescent specialist. Like I, I where are you all? I guess there really is a shortage. Like where, we need more of you. And I feel like med students should definitely get more exposure to this. Moving on to the next specialty, we're gonna take a look at clinical nutrition. So this one may be kind of self-explanatory, but I'll read the definition anyway. So in this uh, specialty, Physicians provide both inpatient and outpatient consultations covering a wide spectrum of nutritional disorders, including supplemental enteral and parenteral nutrition, short bowel syndrome, malabsorption, malnutrition, gastroparesis, and vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So this is a one-year fellowship after having done normally, a, apparently, according to what I've read, a GI or internal medicine um, training track, or you can also do it after doing pediatric residency. Oh my gosh, this kind of specialty is so incredibly necessary and it kind of drives me nuts that we don't get a ton of formal training in nutrition during medical school. Nutrition is kind of breezed over and extremely undervalued in our current healthcare system. It is an essential part of preventive practice and yet we really don't get a ton of exposure to this. So I'm happy to hear that there is a specialty. I just wish that we had more of a focus on it and that we got more exposure. Like this, I feel like clinical nutrition should be a core rotation, a required rotation in medical school. I feel like that would be so helpful and such good background foundational knowledge for all physicians. That's just my take though. Let's move on to last, but definitely not least specialty that we'll talk about today, vascular neurology. And you might think like, wow, that sounds fancy. But it is, it is really cool. It is a stroke doctor. The definition is actually pretty straightforward. Vascular neurologists treat and study diseases which affect the structure and function of the blood vessels supplying the brain. I mean, if you're, if what you're doing is you're studying the blood vessels that supply the brain, what happens when one of those vessels is blocked? That's a stroke. So you can imagine that's the bread and butter of what they do. That's why people call them stroke doctors. Makes sense. If you wanna go into this, it's a one year fellowship after neurology residency. I'm not sure if you can do any other residency and go into this. The one that I found was neurology. If you happen to know that there are other options for residency and being able to go into this, let me know. Pretty amazing. There have got to be a lot of strokes going on to have pretty much an entire specialty dedicated to it. And that kind of makes me wonder if there are a lot of specialty training options like this dedicated to like one specific pathology. If there are, Maybe you guys would be interested in a video on that. Let me know in the comments, DM me. So how cool, we looked at hospice and palliative care, tactical medicine, adolescent medicine, clinical nutrition, and vascular neurology. Five incredible, but very much under the radar medical specialties that most people and even medical students don't know about. And there are still so many more where this came from. And if you wanna explore some more specialties, I'll put a link up above to a really awesome playlist full of videos that do deep dives into a variety of specialties. If there's a particular one that you wanna know more about, out, let me know in the comments and I can cover it in a future video. There's also the Careers in Medicine website that has a ton of information on this stuff and I'll go ahead and put that link in the description box below. While you're over there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video if you found it helpful. Those are the best ways to help this information get out to more pre-meds and medical students. Thanks so, so much for watching. Love you all. Hope you have an incredible rest of your day and see you next time.